we all know a little bit about Portugal, that being football, that being media and the news, the holidays. Let's check out this Jogging Now video, Portugal. Yeah, this is going to be a good one, man. Some countries try to fight the ocean. Others are afraid of the ocean. Portugal practically wants to live in the ocean. If they had Wait, gills, what? they'd sell their land and build an Atlantis. Welcome to the powerful little sailor of Europe. I, I'm not really... I know a lot about... Not, not a lot, but I know a bit about Portugal, but I don't know, like, Everyone the land. Barbs, this episode couldn't have come at a better time because I literally geography. just got back from a trip to Portugal with my mom. I met tons of you guys, the Portuguese geography peeps, and little side note... <laughs> Hey everybody, this is João. He is a native Portuguese person. He'll be coming in and out of this episode explaining things about Portugal. So, say hi. Hi! Anyway, oh, yeah. let's look at the globe now, shall we? <laughs> Portugal is sometimes called the door to Europe. It's the start to the mainland. The Portuguese are ocean people. They need to be close to the sea. They get uncomfortable without it. With that in mind, their country is pretty ideal for them location-wise. Portugal, the rectangle-shaped country, is right located at the, the very end of the Iberian Peninsula, surrounded by Spain on all three sides, as well as two island regions in the Atlantic. They have the westernmost point of continental Europe, Cabo de Roca, and the westernmost point of Europe's domain, the island of Santa Cruz das Flores. Important note, Portugal has one of the oldest borders in Europe and one of the oldest in the world, very much thanks to this treaty signed between these two kings back in cool. 1297. The Spanish and Portuguese have always usually had amicable relations in regards to their state. You know, I'm actually surprised that like, the amount of times I've been to Spain and Spanish islands, yeah, I've not never been Portugal. It's the only kind of dispute they have is over the town of Olivença. This is not an official dispute, but most Portuguese believe that it kind of probably should be theirs because of history or something. Look it up. For what it's worth, though, there's even a spot where you can zip line across this river from Portugal what? into Spain and travel forward one hour in time because for some reason Portugal <laughs> decided to follow the UTC plus one zone instead of plus two like Spain, meaning that even though Galicia is on the same longitude, they are one hour ahead. How? Anyway, the country is divided into 18 districts That's and so two weird. autonomous regions, the Azores and Madeira Islands. These two island regions give a huge boost to Portugal's exclusive economic zone by over 1.7 million square kilometers, making it the third largest EEZ in the EU and the 20th in the world. The capital is Holy Lisbon, fuck. and of course it holds the largest airport, Lisbon International, as well as the largest shipping port, the Port of Lisbon. The second largest city is... I love these videos Sinta, when they do the maps like Vila this. Nova de Gaia. However, Porto actually holds the second busiest airport, and Faro in the south rounds out for third place for airports as well. Remember, even though these little uninhabited guys known as the Savage Islands are closer to the Canary Islands of Spain, they actually belong to Portugal and make up the southernmost right. part of Portugal's domain. One of which cool. right here, Pontina, is actually a self-proclaimed micronation what is that? by some art teacher dude who bought it and then later claimed independence from Portugal in 2007. No Keep in mind, these overseas way. regions, in addition to the Canary Islands and Cape Verde, are part of a larger oceanic region known as Macaronesia, not to be confused with Micronesia, which is... Bro, can I just say, this joke for now, and it is so sick. You know how, like, he's just moving around the globe and stuff? Oh my god, I'm loving it. World. Yeah, that Micronesian island thing. That's a weird one. Look it up. They kind of have yeah, all they need weird. in that small space as long as they have the largest portion of the Atlantic coast on the Iberian Peninsula. This is kind of what allowed them to become the front runners in the age of discovery and European expedition years. Most of the first and famous explorers you probably already heard of, Magellan and Vasco da Gama, they come from Portugal. Ahem. Yeah, 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 you guys took the Arctic and Vinland like hundreds of years earlier. For what it's worth, though, it's important to note that historically, not only were the Portuguese the first to kick off the age of exploration with the first discovery at the Azores and Madeira Islands, but they also had a vast empire at one point expanding across five continents as far as East Timor, oh, to Brazil, and everything what in the between. Heck? The problem was, with the exception of Brazil, Angola, and Mozambique, the Portuguese really only kind of maintained numerous ports and coastal colonies that didn't encroach far inland with the connecting land masses. Their love of the ocean kind of ended up diminishing much of their land claims, and the majority of the ports were either fought over and lost or sold to other colonial powers. Wow, the they've really loved the ocean that night. Nonetheless, fuck. outside of the sovereign Portuguese speaking countries today, you will see small remnants of Portuguese influence in places like China's special autonomous region of Macau with its Portuguese. Mike, you don't realize how small the UK and EU is. <laughs> Like, holy fuck, Australia is bigger than EU, bro. Like, look at Africa compared to the EU. <laughs> What the named fuck? streets and the churches and culture of areas like Goa as well as Damam and Diu in India. Anyway, this segment is getting kind of long. Here are some places of interest that you guys, the Portuguese people, suggested we mention in this episode. They have 17 UNESCO heritage sites. Many wow. of them are famous monasteries. Wow, that was or so nice. Oh, wait, Jogvinal, boom, let me. 
even though the piss is all over the place. Sanctuaries. Sintra has that cool top. national no, palace yeah. thing. And this grotto palace. Guimarães has that castle where Portugal oh, kind of started. Ericeira is like the best surfing spot. Pretty right, much cool. the entire city of Porto with its colorful neoclassical and Baroque charm. They also have the coolest bookstore ever. What the, the most beautiful McDonald's. Those oh my god, wait, what? Classical and Baroque charm. They also have the coolest books. That is ever. one luxury McDonald's. McDonald's. Those Holy shit. Homes in Monsanto. What? The castle of Obidos. Evora has like the best historic sites and even a Portuguese Stonehenge. Cool. Coa Valley rock art sites. The world's shortest international bridge with Spain. <laughs> the cemetery of the anchors. Fuck? The Monte Penedono Dolmen. Pretty much everything on Madeira Island with its beaches and botanical gardens. Wow. And museums. This one is even dedicated to Ronaldo. Bro, I was going to say, surely. Ronaldo is featured in this. Surely, here he is. So, Lisbon has so many sites like the Belem Tower, the Geronimos Monastery, and every year there is a huge pilgrimage to the town of Fatima, one of the holiest sites in Portugal. Yeah, and that's the thing about Portugal. Like once someone finds a cool hidden natural spot, it usually gets exposed and invaded fast. And speaking of nature, that brings us to... Now, as mentioned, Portugal is an ocean-loving country that right. loves the sea and water. Nonetheless, the actual people do need to kind of live on land and, like, grow food on it and stuff. <laughs> of so, course. So, yeah, there's, this is how you break it down. Portugal's land makeup, of course, is made up of the two main parts that fall under Portuguese sovereignty, the continental Portuguese landmass on the Iberian Peninsula and the two island regions of the Azores and the Madeira Islands. The continental part of Portugal is located on the Eurasian Plate, close to the convergence of the African Plate. Geologists speculate that there could be a newly emerging rift which could explain some of the seismic activity such as the great lisbon earthquake of 1755 that nearly destroyed the entire city on oh shit. Day, look it up. anyway the northern parts are generally more fuck? mountainous and hilly with two main mountain chains the northern meseta mountains and the cerro da estrela which has torre the tallest point on the mainland however if we're talking about the tallest point in the entire country that actually belongs to mount pico on azores island back to the mainland though the country is shaped by three main rivers the douro in the north the longest river of the country the tagus or Tagus and the Guadiana in the south, which feeds into the largest lake of the country, Lake Alqueva, which is actually a reservoir created by the Alqueva Dam. The south of the country, known as the Southern Meseta, is generally flatter and lush with the Sado Basin fed by the Sado River. Skipping over to the island regions, the Azores and Madeira Islands are volcanic archipelagos, generally lush and green, oh my and mild God. to warm year-round. Madeira actually has a UNESCO nature zone, the Lorisilva, or Laurel Forest of the north side. For the Azores, they are kind of precariously positioned right at the triple junction of three tectonic plates and the westernmost islands oh, Corvo shit. and Flores are actually located in the North America. Wouldn't there be a lot of like earthquakes and shit like being, you know, that close to free? American plate. They are beautiful green islands that actually kind of resemble the Irish countryside with farm plots dotted everywhere. This island chain is also the only part of Europe, if you don't consider the Wait, how many people Europe, live where there? can be cultivated naturally in its environment. Whew, that was pretty compact in detail. And we didn't even get to talk about all the cool stuff like the cave beach of Wow. Bethil, or this tidal pool or that place where the largest wave ever was surfed by that dude. Whoa, what the fuck? that was Portugal? Yes, it was. <laughs> Look it up. In the meantime, you know the deal. I take my triple shot of espresso break, which means no comes in to fill in for I absolutely like love lave um lave <laughs> uh, late caves the segment did somebody say absolutely cave? love them no I believe he said Noah. For one, they are masters of making anything out of trees, as over a third of the country is forested mostly with oaks, pines, and eucalyptus. Such Portuguese companies, like the Navigator Company, are world-renowned for paper products. And Amorium is the world's largest cork producer, and Portugal being number one in cork production in general. You will see tons of stuff around Portugal made of cork. Cork purses, cork shoes, what? cork notebooks, cork everything. And they love their wine, with <laughs> Port, Rosé, Green, and Madeira wines being some of the most popular types. Portugal is home to many animal species as well. In the continental side, you will find mammals like wild pigs, wild goats, hares, foxes. The unofficial national animal though, or at least a common national symbol, would technically be the legendary mythical Barcelos rooster. They're Europe's top seafood consumer per capita and usually in the top four worldwide. And of course, brings us to the final segment, Food. Some top notable dishes you guys, the Portuguese geography peeps, suggest we mentioned include things like the most iconic national soup, caldo verde. These two sandwiches are probably the most popular what? ones. What? That is like sausage burger, bro. The what is that? Segment. 
food. Some taught notable dishes you guys, the Portuguese jar. The one on the left. We mentioned include things like the most iconic national soup, caldo verde. These they always say like uh, a soup is national for like other countries and stuff. I, I wonder if it's, uh, you know what, stew is probably national for the UK. But what is this? It's like hot dog sandwich buns with egg on top. What? Sandwich is nice. probably the most popular ones. Pastéis de nata. Ooh. And finally with seafood, they have everything from cuttlefish, crabs, I'm not that much of a, shrimp, uh, spiny uh, lobster, fan. barnacles, mackerel, lamprey, sea bass, clams, oysters, periwinkles, scallops, sardines. Everything. Dude, the Portuguese Everything. make the best octopus I ever had in my life. Fun fact, the Portuguese actually introduced samosas to India, temporarily to Japan, and England probably wouldn't have tea if the Portuguese had what? tea in China. And of course, oh, the dumb. most popular dish of Portugal, often seen as a national dish, bacalao, which is salted cod, deliberately preserved and soaked before cooking. Interestingly oh, enough, cod. cod isn't even but commonly caught cod. off their coast, so they have to resort to importing it usually from the North Sea. Their national dish isn't even really found naturally in their own country. But what does occur naturally in Portugal are the Portuguese people. Let's True. meet them, shall we? True. Thank you, Noah. <sighs> Keith again. Art, take care of this. Where am I going? Oh! You're welcome. Now, I asked Joao to describe the Portuguese, and here are some things he said. <laughs> Uh, it's like a resourcefulness of ways. So if you give us like a corkscrew and a frisbee, we'll give you a scooter. Another <coughs> one is estar com os azeites. When someone is really grumpy or in a real bad mood. To sum it up, that's the ideal Portuguese way. In any case... The country has about 10.5 okay. million people and they are one of the top aging populations in the world and has the highest emigration rate in the EU. The exact numbers are not always completely reliable, but many sources on average report that somewhere around 90 to 95% of the population identifies as Portuguese, but that right. term is very broad as there are many different types of Portuguese people that look totally different from the others. Some of them are blonde hair and blue eyed and some are tan and olive and brunette. Either way, Portuguese. The remainder of the 5 to 10% of the population comes from all over the world, mostly Europe and former colonial states like Brazil, Angola and Mozambique, and even a small Asian minority as well, mostly Macau Chinese and India from Goa and Damam and DU. They use the euro as their currency, they use the type C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, of course, in Portugal, the official language is Portuguese, a Latin-based romance language. It must be annoying, like, being in a country that has different plug outlets because, like, you you know, you got a device with the plug, right? Your laptop, it's got a certain plug. You always have to carry an adapter. That's just... I know they'll be used to it, but it's actually related it's so to the Galician like... language in North Spain, and usually the two can pretty much understand each other. And weirdly enough, Galicians and North Portuguese people have Celtic roots. Interesting. We'll talk more Very about that in the main episode. But anyway, Portugal also technically has a second regionally official language, Mirandese, which is only spoken by about 15,000 people in two municipalities of the Northeast region. But otherwise, okay, just being straight up, Portuguese is the most difficult Latin language for me personally. But after spending some time in Portugal, I figured out a shortcut if you want to learn how to speak Portuguese. Here's how you do it. Step one, be Russian. Step two, <laughs> get drunk. Step three, try to speak Spanish. Meu nome é Paulo, eu gosto de pastiche. <laughs> Calm down, this was a joke. Geography now does not endorse underage drinking or alcoholism. And also, oh, do fuck. not confuse the Portuguese with the Spanish. They hate that. Actually, when I met João, yeah, I, I had imagine. this conversation with him. Hey, João? Yes? When I go to Portugal, would it be okay if I spoke some Spanish just in case if I had a complete communication problem? Yeah, no, don't. Just don't. Trust me, you're better off just using English. So anyway, the Portuguese, as mentioned, I have a lot of ocean it. history and Catholic roots. About 81% of the country identifying to varying degrees of devotion as Roman Catholic. The Portuguese aren't too quick to note that they did kind of start the Atlantic slave trade, although keep in mind the East African slave trade was actually started centuries prior by Arabs in the Indian Ocean. Moving on! Portuguese culture comes in many fascinating vibrant forms of tradition and custom. And with that, here's Random Hannah to explain. <laughs> Portugal today is a very distinct nation, but if you dig close, you can see the layers of influence from groups like Phoenician, the Celtic, Germanic, Visigoth, Vikings, Sephardic, Jewish, and Moorish people. Yeah, even cool. Vikings. And don't you forget it. Of course, as intrepid maritime folk, the Portuguese were the first to invent galleon ships that launched off the Age of Discovery for Europe, post-Viking era. With that, they also created the first forms of Western-style nautical cartography and navigation. It would later be taught 
bought and used across the Some continent. Some sort of One guy even tried to pioneer one of the first airship designs. Although what? Portugal may not be well known for their painters or graphic arts, I mean, this dude went crazy and burned every single one of his paintings except one. They definitely have a tradition of three-dimensional expression do that? that dates back centuries. Distinct Portugal styles include things like Manueline architecture of the 16th century, and even today, people like Bordalo II continue the tradition of three-dimensional art. Fun cool. fact, you can probably guess a home is Portuguese if the exterior walls have tiles on them, and often blue pattern tiles. They have their own unique Portuguese sport, where you have to knock off a pen with metal discs in varying weights and sizes. Nonetheless, no shocker, soccer or football is the most popular sport of course. with the oldest club dating back to 1890 in Porto. Their national team has consistently ranked high in FIFA standings. We all know Ronaldo is the most mainstream, noteworthy yep. face of Portuguese football today. I mean, the guy has multiple statues of himself. The legendary Eusebio is considered one of the greatest football icons of all time and the symbol of the nation's sport. Festivals, of course, adorn the entire nation from north to south, many rooted in Catholic tradition. June is a huge month where the Festival of the Three oh, Saints uh. take place all over the country, honoring St. Anthony, John, and Peter, where there's a lot of wine and cool. sardines with fireworks. There's also many unique regional festivals like the Festa de Coco, in which they do fun dragon huh? performances. There's the Lava Yo, Carnival, sick. one of the only places where Celtic rituals can be seen. Anyways, the festivities are usually filled with music, which I guess means we're moving on to Keith's segment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Starting as early as Gregorian chants in the medieval ages, evolving into the classical era, I and eventually he's just the winning music the Eurovision, guy Portugal has had lots of musical accolades. And there's a certain word that kind of describes the overall feeling of Portuguese-ness when it comes to music. Saude. Saudade. It translates Saudade. to something like a sense of melancholy and longing as if something were missing. Uh, this type of mindset is one of the key elements that inspired the most famous of all Portuguese musical genres, Fado. It's even listed as a UNESCO heritage trait. The most recognizable name with Fado being Amalia Rodriguez. Never Listen heard. To it, see what you think. Portuguese have their own version of guitars, drums, accordions, even bagpipes. The ukulele. The thing with the Portuguese, what I've noticed, is they, they like to do things their way and differently. They, they like to be unique with things. From Hawaii was actually introduced from the Portuguese migrants, mostly from cool. the Azores and Madeira Islands, where my ancestors are actually from fun fact today the portuguese music scene has everything from mainstream hip-hop rock pop metal moon spell being one of the more popular metal bands from portugal uh one time i saw moon spell at i think it was Ozfest. i don't remember moon spell is awesome yeah and thank you keith all right and with that we got to move on to the incredibly condensed history section proto-iberian cultures indo-european migrations atlantic bronze age lisbon founded phoenicians proto-celts rome comes in christianity persecution of christians visigoths i Vandals, swear everyone's Wars, had a bit of everyone things coming briefly from the north parts fighting, like fighting, when you well, go back to history uh, everyone's had a taste of everyone mom. uninhabited <laughs> madeira and azores islands discovered age of discovery kicks off atlantic slave trade Colonies established, Inquisitions, Great Earthquake of 1755, Napoleon Years, First Constitution, Last Monarch Deposed, Republic, World War I joins Allied forces, World War II gets messy, Salazar begins his reign, Colony Wars in Africa, Colonies gain independence, but Timor is still on hold, New Constitution joins EU, World's Fair Expo, releases Macau, releases oh, East Timor, Hipster Shops and Trendy Yet Pretentious Warehouse District Cafes open up, <laughs> and here we are today! How we asked long? you guys for a list of some of the top notable people from Portugal or of Portuguese descent. And they include people like Prince Henry the Navigator, even though he never really did any exploring himself. Diaz, <laughs> Vasco da Gama, Ferdinand Magellan, Why does he have that these name? athletes, these yeah. two popes, Nobel Prize winner in medicine, Egas Moniz, the greatest writers, Luis de Camões, Fernando Pessoa, and Jose Saramago, Daniela Rua, Carmen Miranda, Maria Joao Pires, Sara Sampeo, Paula Rego, and some American and Canadian celebrities that have Portuguese descent include Nelly Furtado, Sean Mendes, one of my favorite animators, JG Quintel, even Tom Hanks, and and uh, this guy, I guess, uh, you got Portuguese, right? Yeah, totally, man. Great grandfather was actually born. He was born in the Madeira Islands. Keith Everett. Well, as you can see by now, with their bold exploring roots, Portugal has definitely left its mark on the world. And with that, we will oh, want to see how the mark has impacted their relationships to others around the world. In. Well, you know, the Portuguese and the British, they don't really have a good... Well, actually, we have an amazing relationship. But back in the day, when Portugal knocked us out from the World Cup and Euros, you know, a couple of times. 
You know, we yeah, gotta Portugal crash on the football like the terms. Portugal nation that left the biggest legacy. Over 30 times more people than the population of Portugal across the world speak Portuguese than in Portugal. For oh, one, shit. they have the what longest the official alliance between two countries on Earth with the UK. Forged in 1373, they have been working alongside the British for a long time and have developed numerous bilateral policies and trade deals. Long story short, the Portuguese introduced tea to the British and the British helped them get cod. For France, Sick. Portugal is kind of like the lean Latin boy next door who keeps trying to flirt with France, even even though she's kind of dating Germany. There are more Portuguese people living abroad in France than any other nation at about 2 million. The Portuguese oh love God. the French. They enjoy the laissez-faire culture and charm and have integrated very well into French society. The Portuguese were the first Europeans to have encountered the Japanese and much of the historical interaction reverberates to this day culturally. I mean, they founded the port city of Nagasaki and even the word arigato is derived from the Portuguese word obrigado. Even when Japan was isolated, they traded for centuries only with the Portuguese. Even though what things got fuck? messy in the 60s and That's 70s, it. they still have close ties to their former colonies, especially Brazil, Angola, and to some extent Mozambique. Many of these people have recently moved in on separate migration waves, and today you can see many of them in major cities like Lisbon and Porto. Billions of dollars are traded with Angola annually, and Portugal even cancelled Mozambique's remaining debts from independence to 2005 oh, at sorry. nearly $400 million. Brazil is their biggest legacy. It's like the sun they fed steroids and became a massive giant <laughs> bodybuilder. Today, the Brazilian dialect of Portuguese is more widely taught and distributed in media than actual Portuguese Portuguese, and even after independence, the two have shared a privileged family bond that will always have high favor towards the other. For what it's worth though, when it comes to their best friend, most Portuguese might begrudgingly hate to admit it, but they kind of, at the end of Spain? the day, will always walk side by side with their oldest friend, right. Spain. Portugal was actually the first nation that fully emerged out of the Iberian Peninsula back when Spain was a bunch of disjointed kingdoms. Since then, they've been rivals and adversaries. During colonial years, they competed to see who could take over the Americas better. They've had centuries of conflict and treaties, alliances, unions, arguments, but in the end, they just have that Iberian culture and Latin root that ties them in so closely as brothers. In conclusion, <laughs> We say that we like to keep things moderate and simple, but our history is anything but moderate and simple. Our love of yeah. water kind of spilled over into a global empire phenomenon that even us probably didn't see coming. Today, the Portuguese legacy lives on. Stay tuned. Sit. Really good video. Next. Enjoyed that one. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And I'll see you all in the next video.